lawsuit reveals that the NSA received 29 extraterrestrial messages from space a long time ago. It's by Steve McCamley on Collective Spark. The picture here represents a broadcast known as the Arecibo message, put together by Carl Segan and colleagues that were sent into space via radio waves at a special ceremony to celebrate the remodeling of the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico. Apparently, they received a response, and you can read more about it in the link in the article here I'll leave below. It's speculated for sure, but the information is not, and this article pertains to the real document. Strange signals detected from outer space are becoming quite popular, especially within the past couple of years alone, and one of the several studies posited that some of these signals could be from an intelligent extraterrestrial source. Scientists have discovered six more bursts of radio signals coming from a place in deep space outside our galaxy from where similar signals were detected earlier this year and back in 2012. From this specific location, a total of 17 such radio signals have been received, and given their nature, there is also heavy speculation about whether we are being quote-unquote contacted by some type of extraterrestrial life form and you can read that more about that in the link below. This article touches upon an NSA document that was released via a lawsuit, a FOIA, a FOIA uh, Freedom of Information Act. Rumors around the internet say the agency was ordered to declassify the document back in 2004, but did not officially re release it until 2011, which they did so quietly. Not many details are available about that document except for the fact that it is real and published in the NSA database via their technical journal. Its title is Key to the Extraterrestrial Messages, and a gentleman by the name of H. Campaign attempts to decode the messages. It says, Dr. Campaign represents a series of 29 messages. Dr. Campaign presented a series of 29 messages from outer space. The following article develops a key to these messages. The paragraph from the appendix reads as follows. Quote, Recently, a series of radio messages was heard coming from outer space. The transmission was not continuous, but cut by pauses into pieces, which could be taken as units, for they were repeated over and over again. End quote. Towards the end of the document, the author states that, quote, We have penetrating... We have penetrated the meaning of the basic symbols and even more important have learned some of the syntax rules of the notation and have caught mistakes in the process. We have a few words for sophisticated concepts and given more, more data with a little labor, we could establish its translation." End quote. There was no document to be found that actually describes what exactly they found out and what that translation was. Quite interesting, quite interesting to say the least. Keep in mind, though, this is one of the thousands of documents that have been released via FOIA requests and dozens of global intelligent agencies and governments have now released hundreds of thousands of pages of documents that discuss possible extraterrestrial beings. For example, page 21 and 22 of the document uh, in this link is an FBI document in the form of a memorandum addressed to, quote, certain scientists of distinction to aeronautical and military authorities and to a number of public officials, end quote. The document is a letter that was sent to the director of the FBI in Washington from the San Francisco office on a matter pertaining to UFOs and extraterrestrials. Quote, Lieutenant Colonel, name redacted, of G2, G2 means Army Intelligence, San Francisco advised today he has no further information and that our Seattle office is in possession of all information known by him and is, handled, is handling the matter at Tacoma, Washington." End quote. The document goes on to provide a copy of a letter written by someone with, quote, several university degrees, end quote, and a former, quote, university department head, end quote. It contemplates an extraterrestrial presence visiting us. There's also an important distinction to be made from the UFO phenomenon and the extraterrestrial phenomenon, although there is 
sufficient evidence to show that, at least in some cases, they are interrelated. That being said, many of these UFOs could be, and probably are, highly sophisticated black budget, that is, special access programs, human craft. The existence of UFOs has been officially verified, and thousands of military records show that they are commonly tracked on radar and perform maneuvers and travel at speeds that no known aircraft can travel. This seems to have started a long time ago in Germany, and the CIA was keeping tabs. And here's a link, a great example straight from its archive. Quote, a German newspaper recently published an interview with George Klein, famous German engineer and aircraft expert, describing the experimental construction of flying saucers carried out by him from 1941 to 1945, end quote. There are hundreds of cases, and it's, it's something that still happens today. A quite popular incident comes from Tehran, Iran. This incident occurred in the night of September 18, 1976. A four-page U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency NASA report, uh, sorry, NSA report, describes the encounter in detail. Furthermore, both of the pilots involved discussed the events years later. Now, what happened on this night is an example of what has happened multiple times with regard to military encounters with UFOs. Residents of the city noticed a bright, big bright object in the sky. The airport traffic controller also noticed, quote, it was intensely bright object that was not supposed to be there, end quote. The Iranian Air Force was contacted at the time they were a close ally of the United States under the rule of the Shah of Iran, and they dispatched two F-4 fighter jets to check out the object. The United States look, took this encounter very seriously. A report of what happened was sent to multiple national security officials and U.S. President Gerald R. Ford, CIA director. Now, both pilots were approaching the object, experienced weapon systems and electronic failure within their craft. Quote, as the F-4 approached a range of 25 nautical miles, it lost all instrumentation communications. When the F-4 turned away from the object and apparently was no longer a threat to it, the aircraft regained all instrumentation and communications. Another brightly lit lighted object came out of the original object. The second object headed straight towards the F-4, end quote. Dr. Jacques Vallée, notable for co-developing the first computerized mapping of Mars for NASA and for his work at SRI International on the Network Information Center for our planet, a precursor to the modern internet, also published a paper in the Journal of Scientific Exploration titled Estimates of Optical Power Output in Six Cases of Unexplained Aerial objects with defined luminosity characteristics, end quote. It's a great, it's, uh, it's in, in it is a great shot of one of these UFOs snapped by Canadian military pilots, and this is the image here. You can see the white orb there amongst the clouds. I'd like to point out that although the existence of UFOs is verified, the fact that these could be operated by extraterrestrials is not. That being said, just as there was a lot of evidence for the UFO phenomenon before all of this declassification, there is still, quote, abundant evidence that we are being contacted, end quote. Dr. Brian O'Leary, ex-NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor said, what points to this fact is that those directly involved with these sightings and those who have held some prominent positions have clearly stated hundreds of times that some of these UFOs are indeed operated by extraterrestrials. Quote, this thing has gotten so highly classified, it is just impossible to get anything on it. I have no idea who controls the flow of need to know because, frankly, I was told in such an emphatic way that it was none of my business that I've never tried to make it to be my business since. I have been interested in the subject for a long time, and I do know that whatever the Air Force has on the subject is going to remain highly classified, end quote. This was said by former Senator Barry Goldwater, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, whoever is in control or in the know, quote unquote, with regard to this topic, it's way above the government and most likely managed by some sort of secret government atop the deep state. Given the release of this information within these past few years, 
those that are mentioned in these files have come forward, one out of many examples would be now retired Navy Commander Pilot Graham Bethune, who held a top secret clearance. He was a VIP plane commander who flew most of the high ranking officers and civilians from Washington, D.C. In his testimony below, he explains how he was flying a group of VIPs and other pilots into Argentina, Newfoundland, when every single person on the plane witnessed a 300 foot object that traveled 10,000 feet straight up in a fraction of a second towards their plane. To access the official files pertaining to this particular case, you can visit the government's Project Blue Book files to read them. You can find those links in the files for this case at the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. In this interview, he states he learned that some of these objects were indeed extraterrestrial and from, quote, the boys upstairs, end quote. So as you can see, there is no shortage of information within this realm in the form of credible sources and documents and statements from credible people. This isn't, isn't even the tip of the iceberg. Now, this article, Lawsuit Reveals NSA Received 29 Extraterrestrial Messages for Space a long time ago, was originally created for Collective Evolutions, published here under Creative Commons on Collective Spark by Steve McCamley. Please leave me your comments. I hope you found this uh, interesting. I do. Um, it could be that they are Atlanteans. You know, we look at them as perhaps uh, having too much of an advanced technology. We know the Atlanteans used to live for tens of thousands of years. There are many who believe that these Atlanteans are hiding quite well and that they still, some of them are still living among us. And this is, could be their ancient, very advanced technology. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.